theoretical things you have studied in your dorm lab. So we will try to experimentally analyze those uh, factors which will affect the particular system. So today we will be studying the uh, simple pendulum which is the basic uh, uh, concept of a vibration where we will be studying uh, what is a vibration and what is a free vibration. So you have studied, you have studied already what is free vibration. Any system which is doesn't have any damping during its motion is called as a free vibration. Okay, and also there is a concept that in a free vibration, if I take a body and give its initial displacement, and if I allow it to oscillate in its free environment, okay, in your theoretical you have already studied what is free environment where there is no any damping or there is no any resistance to the body. So coming to the simple pendulum, we have already studied in your theoretical case. How how does a simple pendulum looks? It is nothing but you can see this particular uh, model here. This is a simple pendulum. Okay, it consists of a string connected to a bob. Okay, this is a bob and it has a certain mass. Okay, and it has a pivot point here. Okay, this is a pivot point. Through this, an oscillation is happening. Okay, so in your uh, theoretical case, what you have done is you have taken a bob and you have assumed a simple oscillation about its axis. So when you do it, so I just take a pendulum and leave it. So this is an oscillation which is happening. So you can just see here, this is an oscillation which you are happening and through this you are calculating a concept called as natural frequency. Okay? So this is a natural frequency which is very much useful in order to analyze any system because we already studied the concept of resonance which will affect the system. Okay. So here we need to calculate all the natural frequencies for all the systems. So whatever the natural frequency is there, those natural frequencies have to be calculated and we need to uh, implement them whenever we are designing any particular system. So now the question comes why we need to do this particular experiment. So the thing is, if you have studied the, your theoretical classes, in your normal classes, you have already started the vibration concept. Whenever you are deriving the natural frequency in a free vibration system, we assume that there is no any damping or there is no any resistance for a particular motion. So uh, in your theoretical cases, what you have assumed, if I take a pendulum and allow it to swing, okay, it will be done in a vacuum vacuum environment where there is no any air. So when I do it in that particular place, it will indefinitely have the oscillation, it will level down. Because you already studied the kinetic energy is converted into potential energy and meanwhile the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. Because of that, there is no any loss of energy. But what happens whenever we are doing any in practical cases, we have to work for in this particular environment where air is everywhere. Okay? So whenever a vibration happens, okay, we can't consider it to be a totally a free vibration. Because when a vibration happens, for example, if I take this pendulum and allow it to oscillate. So if you leave after some uh, amount of time, the pendulum comes to its original position. Why it is happening? Because air is a damper. So air always, whenever you are giving the walk to have a motion, it has to pass the air resistance then it has to travel. Because of that, after a certain amount of time, the energy dies out and the pendulum comes to its original position. Okay, but in your theoretical cases, what you have done? We have not done like that. We assume that it is a continuous motion. So in this experiment, we will be considering that case if with the damping and without the damping. So in your uh, experiment, in your theoretical case, what you have done? You have told that without the damping, there is a natural frequency which you have calculated. For example, for a simple pendulum, you have calculated the natural frequency as a root G by L, which means that G is the acceleration due to gravity and L is the length of the pendulum. Okay? So here, if you observe the equation, it is G by L. Okay? And we have provided a bob here which has certain mass. From the theoretical calculation, it is clear that mass doesn't have any picture on this natural frequency of the system for a, for a case of a simple pendulum. Okay? So if you replace this particular uh, bob by 10 kg or by 100 kg, keeping the length constant, it doesn't affect the natural frequency of the system. 
So, mass doesn't have any nature in this particular hash of frequency. The only parameter which governs here is root g by n. g is acceleration due to gravity which is constant for our earth. Okay, which is same for all the, wherever we go it will be remain same. The length of the pendulum. So, how to calculate the length of the pendulum? We will see in the later pieces. So, if you come across the tabular column here, so the simple pendulum, uh, this is the tabular column which we need to calculate. First, it says that it is the length of the hook, radius of the ball. Okay, I will tell you what are these implication means. Then it comes length of the spin, total length of the pendulum, number of oscillations, time taken for n oscillations. So here what we are trying to do is, we have already told you that uh, in the, with respect to the equation is length of the pendulum is the effect for the natural frequency of the system. So what we are doing here is, we are changing the length of the pendulum. First question comes, how to measure the length of the pendulum? Okay, so length of the pendulum technically means, so if I take, this is a string, it has been pivoted at this particular point, this is a check, print check and it is being pivoted here. So, the length of the pendulum starts from this pivot point to the roller or whatever the bob is there to the box CG, center of gravity. Okay? So, which means that from here to its CG will be constituting the length of the pendulum. So, how to calculate the length of this pendulum? It has been split up into three parts. One is, if you see the total length of the pendulum is LH. LH means it is the length of the hook. So what have, they have done is the experimentation, in order to connect the bob with the spring, they have incorporated a hook. You can observe this hook here. Okay? This is the hook which is being mounted over the surface of this bob. So if I just measure this, uh, this hook length, I will be getting what is the length of that hook. So if you, we have already done measured this particular uh, length of the hook, which if you see in the observation, it is 0 0.013 meter. So everything should be in meter here so that the calculation remains very simple. So next comes the radius of the ball. So next comes the radius of the ball. This is a ball which is having a certain diameter. So if you see, we have taken the working caliper and we have measured the diameter of this ball. And this ball has a radius of 0 0.03 meter. Okay? So then our question comes, we already know the length of the ball and the length of the or the radius of the ball. The only concern is we have to just measure this from this pivot point to this hook point. <coughs> the end point of this hook, we have to measure the length. If we measure the length, we will be directly getting the length of the string. So after getting the length of the string, we will just add up these other two parameters. Totally, we will get the length of the pendulum. Okay? So after getting the length of the pendulum, we need to uh, oscillate the pendulum for 10 cycles. Okay, 10 oscillations for 10 cycles. So I explain you what is a cycle means. So if you take a ball, okay, I am holding this as the initial position, initial position of the ball. So when I leave this ball, the lead ball will travel through its equilibrium position and reaches to the other extreme position and come back to its original position. So this is completes one cycle. So remember that you cannot take half the cycle, you have to take complete one cycle. So the bob travels from, starts from here, it reaches its extreme point, come back to its original position. This constitutes one cycle. So like this, we have to calculate the time taken for the bob to travel 10 cycles or 10 oscillations. And then we will be writing those values in how many seconds it has taken, uh, 10 cycles, it has taken to travel 10 cycles, we will be calculating the thing. Later part will be the calculation part. Okay, so we will be doing the calculation separately and we will be telling you what will be the error. Okay, when we calculate the theoretical part as well as the experimental part because of the time. And then we have to write the experimental natural frequency and theoretical natural frequency and we need to find out the error between them which will give you the realistic value because in your theoretical you have assumed it is zero environment where there is no any error and in your practical you are doing error as an environment and you will tell what is the error so now we will be starting
starting with the experiment. Already for calculating the length of the pendulum, we have done these two calculations or means to measure that is length of the rope and radius of the ball. Only we need to measure the length of the string. So how to measure the length of the string? So we have a measuring tape here. So what we do is we we'll take this as a end point, okay, a starting point. We we'll go down until it goes to the exactly to the end of the straight. We have to keep it as a straight here. So if I measure this, it is 50 centimeters. Okay, if you measure this, it will be 50 centimeters. I will be converting it into meter. It is 0 0.50 meter. So then, I will be considering this length of the string, length of the hook and radius of the ball constituting the whole length of the pendulum. So I have already explained you what is length of the pendulum. Right from the pivot point to its CG will be the length of the pendulum. So when we do this, we will be getting the value as So if you do it, the same thing comes 
here it was 0.50, now it is 0.40. So the total length of the pendulum will be 0.443 meter. Okay, so this will be the uh, length of the pendulum. So now we will be doing the same experiment for 10 oscillations. What will be the diameter? So same thing, you have to take the bow, you have to hold it to a smaller angle, then we have to leave it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So for ten cycles, we will be getting thirteen seconds. Okay, so it means that if I reduce the length, the time taken will be less. Okay, and we will see what will be the effect of the natural frequency on this particular length. So in the next, we will be reducing the length to 0 0.30 cm and we will see the gradient. Okay, now we have reduced this length of the string to 0 0.30 m or 30 cm. The same experiment has to be repeated. In one second, we will be going for 10 cycles. Okay, so I will have to do it. So I will take a bow and place it at an angle, very small angle. You should not go for a larger angle. Otherwise your answer will be, uh, will be a lot of errors will be there in that. So I will take this. I will start now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. So students, we have already seen the experimentation of the simple pendulum. So now we shall see how to do the calculations to determine the natural frequency that is through experimental natural frequency and the theoretical natural frequency and also find the percentage of error. And also we have seen why the error occurs. So here the observations which you need to note down. The length of the hook, which is denoted as LH, is 0 0.013 meters. Then the radius of the ball, that is the pendulum ball, is denoted by small r, which is 0 0.03 meters. Now let us focus on the tabulation part. So if you see in the tabulation, the 50% of the tabulation is already done, that is you have collected this reading by performing the experiment. So for different lengths of string, uh, strings, we have seen the total length of the pendulum, then what uh, 10 was the number of oscillations we have taken and we have got the time taken for these 10 oscillations. So now what we need to determine here is the time period. Okay, then the frequency that is omega experimental and omega theoretical. And also we have to find the percentage of error with respect to omega experimental and with respect to omega theoretical. So now let us see the calculation part. So here the first thing which we need to calculate is the time period. So how to calculate the time period? So time period is calculated by the equation time taken upon the number of oscillations. Say for example over here the time taken for 10 oscillation when the string is 0.5 meters. Okay, So the first reading, so I shall show you the calculation or only the first set of reading on the similar lines you have to perform the calculation for the remaining set of readings. Okay, So let us see now for the first set. So here, what is the time taken for n oscillation? It is 14.4 seconds. So I just write in the numerator 
4 seconds and the de uh, in the denominator we will have number of oscillations. So how many oscillations we have done? 10 oscillations. So in the denominator I will substitute this as 10. So we will get here the time period t. So this comes to 1.44 seconds. So now this time period I will note it down in this column. So 1.44. So which is that column? So we have the column time period. So here time period t will be now 1.44. On similar lines you have to calculate the time period for the second set of reading and the time period for third set of reading. So this I will denote it as t1. Similarly you have to calculate T2 and T3. Okay, so this set I have denoted as T1. So you have to calculate T2 and T3. Now we shall see the frequency that is experimental omega and theoretical omega. So first we shall focus on the experimental omega. So it is given by the equation omega exp that is the experimental natural frequency is equal to 2 pi by t where t is the time period. So I'll write this as 2 pi by time period t we have got for the first set of reading as 1.44. So I write here 1.44. So this will be equal to 4.3633. So the units will be in radians per second. So this way we have now calculated omega experimental for the first set of reading. Similarly we have to calculate omega experimental for the second set and omega experimental for the third set. So these two you need to calculate on the similar lines how I calculated the omega experimental using this equation that is 2 pi by t. So in the table let me note down this value. So I've got this as 4.3633. So I'll just write this as 4.363 over here. So this is my experimental natural frequency in radians per second. Now let us find the theoretical natural frequency. So we have the equation omega th that means theoretical natural frequency omega th is equal to root of g by l. So g is our gravity. So for earth we have g as 9.81. So this will be root of 9.81 divided by here we will be taking the l. So this l will be not the just length of the string but it will be the total length that is length of the string plus length of the hook plus uh, the radius of the ball. So together we have L value for the first set of reading as 0.543. So you can see this 0.543. So this value of L I will substitute in this equation that is over here. So this will be 0.543. So when I calculate this, I will get this as 4.250 radians per second. Okay. So I've got now theoretical natural frequency for the first set of reading. So similarly, you have to calculate omega th for the second set and omega th for the third set. Okay. So all these three calculations should be present in your journal. That is whatever calculation I am showing over here, you should have in your journal the three set of the same calculation. Okay. So now in the table, I will write down this value. So I've got this as 4.250. So here in the table, I'll write this theoretical value as 4.250. 
okay now i need to find the percentage of error so if you notice here the experimental natural frequency and theoretical natural frequency are different that is they are not exactly same there is some error over here so why is that error we have already seen that it is because of the air damping so now here i will calculate the percentage of error with respect to the experimental natural frequency and also with respect to theoretical natural frequency okay so the percentage of error with respect to omega exp that is experimental natural frequency we have the equation as omega exp minus omega th upon omega exp into 100 so what is the experimental omega we have got it is 4.363 so 4.363 i will write here minus omega theoretical we just calculated it as 4.250 so 4.250 i write over here if the denominator will be omega exp which is 4.363 so this into 100 so when i calculate this i will get this as 2.59 percent okay so there is an error of 2.59 or 2.6 percent error is there with respect to omega experimental we'll also calculate the error with respect to omega theoretical so again i'll do the same thing so before this i need to tell you here like how i calculated this percentage of error with respect to omega experimental i need to also calculate the same for the second and third set of reading so here under the heading percentage error with respect to omega exp so you should have first calculation this reading uh, this calculation which i have shown this will be for the first reading Similarly, you should have the calculation for the second and the calculation for the third. Upon doing that, we move on to the next percentage of error with respect to omega th. So here, what is the theoretical value we have got? It is 4.250 minus experimental is 4.363 upon omega th will be 4.250 into 100 so here if you see in the numerator when i simplify this there will be a minus sign that will come but don't worry here we are just calculating that error so it will be in percentage so don't worry about the sign whether it is plus or minus so we'll just simplify and calculate what is this percentage so upon simplifying i will get this percentage as 2.66 percent so I have got now the percentage error with respect to omega theoretical. So here this is the percentage error with respect to omega experimental and this is the percentage error with respect to omega theoretical. Similarly, you have to calculate this percentage error omega theoretical with respect to omega theoretical for the second as well as the third reading. Now once this is done, we will enter that in the table. So this we got it as 2.59%. And this was 2.66 percent okay so similarly you need to calculate the time period the natural frequency that is experimental and theoretical and percentage error with respect to experimental and theoretical for the second set of reading also the time period omega exp omega th percentage error with respect to omega exp and percentage error with respect to omega theoretical for the third set of reading so once you calculate this, what is the final conclusion? So here we can say that there is some amount of error between the natural frequency obtained with experimental method and the natural frequency obtained using the theoretical method. And the main reason for this percentage error is because of the air damping as the theoretical natural frequency is possible only in the vacuum state that is when we have the environment as the vacuum we will have the theoretical uh, natural frequency same as that of experimental natural frequency but because of damping there is difference in the 
natural frequency. So this is about the calculations for the simple pendulum experiment. Hello everyone. So today we will be just uh, going through the experiment number 2 that is nothing but compound pendulum. In the previous experiment you have done a simple pendulum. So this is nothing but a compound pendulum. So what you will be doing in this is this is a compound, uh, compound pendulum this is a compound pendulum so what is compound pendulum so basically the, the definition says it is a rigid body which is suspended from one horizontal axis means these are this is one horizontal axis this, these are the different different poles where you will be suspending this mass of this pendulum and this is a rigid body where there is no change in the length within the pendulum this is nothing but a compound pendulum and in the previous one, what you have seen is a simple pendulum where the length was varying, here also the length varies, but there the mass was distributed along one side of the pivot point, but in the compound pendulum, the mass is distributed on both the sides of the pivot point or horizontal axis. Okay. And before going through the shadow experiment, we will just see which are the three. So we will just see which are the things, nothing but which are the values you need to consider in the experimental setup. So what we consider is, first is the length of the rod we consider. So what is the length of the rod is? So this is, the length of the rod is complete length of the compound pendulum is the length of the rod. And this we denote it as capital L. This is nothing but length of the rod. That is capital L, we need to write it. When we measure this, so how much we are getting this? We are getting this as 60 centimeters. So when we write it in meters, it will be 0 0.60 meters. Next is, we will be just finding the distance between the pivot point or the suspension point of uh, the distance from the pivot point to the CG. That is nothing but the small length. So how to measure this is, so initially what I have done is, this is the pivot point. I have taken, if, if you want you can change the pivot point also. So where is the CG here? CG is half of this complete length. So here is the CG which I have not using the chop. So how to measure is, this is the, from here to here it is 25 centimeters. So that we will convert it into meters and we will measure it in write down the small l. So make sure that to differentiate capital L and small l. Small l is nothing but it is a distance from the pivot point to the CG of this compound pendulum. <coughs> and see when you see the capital column, it is as same as what you have done in the simple pendulum also. So first we will be writing the distance from the CG to the pivot point that is 0.25 we have got. Next is we need to find out the number of uh, time taken for 10 oscillations. Means similarly what you have done in simple pendulum. So how we generally do this is we will be starting from one point and we will be coming back. We will be starting from one point and we will be coming back to the same point. So this is one remote, one oscillation. Means I will start from here, it goes like this and again comes back to this position. This is one oscillation. So what we need to do is start. So we need to find out the time taken for 10 oscillations or if you want to be considered for 20, 30 left to you but it should be number of oscillations should be constant here. So we will be considering 10 as the number of oscillations. So how to find the oscillations is if I leave from this point for this particular position it goes like this and again comes back this and this is nothing but the one oscillation like this we need to measure it for 10 oscillations. So if I start here, already I have measured the distance from this nothing but small l I have got and I have got the capital L. Now next is we need to get the time taken. So what I do is I will be giving some small, I will be giving some small information and I will be leaving now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So the time taken for 10 oscillations is nothing but 13 seconds. Similarly, we need to change the length now. 
that is the pure point whatever is this this has to be changed for the next pure point <coughs> Now, after changing this pivot point, we need to measure the small L. Previously, it was 0.25 meters. Now, again, we need to measure it using the scale. So, when we measure, this is nothing but 20 centimeters. Again, for the second reading also, I will give. Excitation that is, I need to find out the time taken for 10 oscillations again. Students, 
So next we shall see the calculation for the compound pendulum. Again here it is similar to that of what has been done in the simple pendulum except for few changes which I will be telling you during the calculation explanation here. So we have already noted down the observation. So here the length of the rod denoted with capital L is 0 0.6 meters. Okay. So this is basically required to calculate the radius of gyration. So this tabulation again here we have. So again this is 50% complete that is you have taken this readings by performing the experiments. So first thing we measure the distance between point of suspension and the CG of the compound pendulum. So the first length is 0.25 meters. The second length is 0.2 meters and third length is 0.15 meters. Here also we give the number of oscillations as 10 and the time taken for these 10 oscillations are 13 seconds, 11 seconds and 10 seconds respectively. Now we need to find out the time period, the frequency that is the natural frequency with experimental and theoretical that is omega exp and omega theoretical and also we will be finding this percentage of error and again here also the error is due to the air damping. Okay. So now we shall first see how to calculate the time period. So again the same equation the time period is denoted as time taken upon the number of oscillations. So for the first set of readings the time taken is 13 seconds upon the number of oscillation is 10. So this will be 13 divided by 10. So this will be equal to 1.3 seconds. So the time period for the first reading is 1.3 seconds. So we'll note that in this column, so T as 1.3. So if I denote this as T1, that means time period for the first set of reading, you have to calculate on the similar lines T2 and T3. That is time period for the second set and time period for the third set of readings which are obtained here. Next, we shall see how to determine the experimental uh, frequency that is omega experimental for the first set of reading only and again on similar lines you have to determine the same for the remaining two sets also. So the experimental omega is given by 2 pi by t that is 2 pi divided by time period. So this will be 2 pi by the first time period we have is 1.3. So this comes to 4.833 radians per second. So this value I'll note it down in the tabulation. So we have got the experimental frequency as 4.83. I'll note it down over here. Okay. Now I need to calculate the theoretical omega. So let us see how to calculate this theoretical frequency. So the theoretical frequency is given by the equation omega th is equal to root of g into l upon k square plus l square. So g is nothing but the gravity and for earth the gravity or the average gravity is 9.81. This l is the length which you have taken that is the distance between the point of suspension and CG upon K square this K is the radius of gyration and this L again is the distance between the point of suspension and CG. So this radius of gyration K is calculated by using this equation that is K is equal to capital L upon 2 into root 3. Now what is this capital L? Capital L is nothing but the length of the rod. So total length of the rod which you have taken in the observation that is 0.6 meters. So when I substitute these values I will get the value of k. So let me do that part. Okay. So a, k is given by is l upon 2 
root 3. Okay. So this L, I'll substitute this as 0.60 meters upon 2 root 3. So when I simplify this, I'll get this as 0 0.1732. Okay. So this is the radius of gyration. The units again are here in the meter. Next, using this K, I have to calculate omega theoretical. So the equation for omega theoretical is G into L upon K square plus L square. So here it will be root of G value we know for earth it is 9.81 into the L value that is for the first reading which you have got is 0.25. So you have taken this as 0.25 upon k square that is 0 0.1732 0 0.1732 the whole square into 0.25 the whole square. So this is going to be the theoretical omega. So when we calculate this value we get omega th as 5.15 radians per second. Okay. So here we have now calculated the theoretical omega. So in the table we will write this theoretical omega value. So this will be 5.15. So you can see the difference over here with the experimental as well as the theoretical natural frequency. So we need to find now what is the percentage of error. So again this will be similar to what is done in the simple pendulum. So with respect to omega experimental, what we do? Omega experimental minus omega theoretical upon omega experimental into 100. And with respect to omega theoretical, we do it as omega theoretical minus omega experimental upon omega theoretical into 100. So let us see those calculations. So the percentage of error with respect to omega experimental is omega experimental minus omega theoretical upon omega experimental. So this into 100. Okay. So when I substitute these values, experimental, I've got this as 4.83 minus omega theoretical is 5.15 upon omega experimental that is 4.83 into 100. Okay. So when I simplify this, I will get it as 6.63%. Similarly, we have to calculate this percentage error with respect to omega experimental for the second reading as well as third reading. Now we shall see the percentage error with respect to omega theoretical. So the equation is omega th minus omega exp upon omega th into 100. So omega th is 5.15 minus omega experimental is 4.83 upon omega theoretical is again 5.15 into 100. So when I simplify this, I will get this as 6.21%. So I'll note down these errors in the tabulation. So here percentage of error with respect to omega experimental is 6.63% and percentage of error with respect to omega theoretical is 6.21% percent. So again here this er uh, error we know why we have got it. On similar lines again I am telling you from the beginning you have to calculate the time period for the second set of reading, the frequency that is experimental and theoretical for the second set of reading, the percentage of error with respect to omega experimental and omega theoretical for the second set of reading. Then also we have to calculate the time period, frequency and percentage of error for the third set of reading. So these are the calculations which you need to show in your journal for the compound pendulum.